let's speak now to Madan Khonsari, who is a former Iranian diplomat. He joins us now from Madrid. Thanks so much for speaking to us. These protests, they seem to be tapering off now, but how do you assess their impact? I mean, to have so many people actually calling for the resignation of the Supreme Leader himself, it really is remarkable. I think that, uh, as you said, this is quite remarkable in that there is a huge consensus building within Iran that the various problems confronting the nation have all their, their roots all come from the fact that the Supreme Leader and the people around him, all, all the key levers of power and in Iran and within the state, and that they have used those key levers of power to essentially either isolate Iran from the international community through ideological uh, objectives, irrespective of Iranian national interest. And of course, the events of the past two weeks highlighted today by the announcement of the EU three foreign ministers that uh, uh, Iran could potentially be placed under greater sanction. The blame for all of this is essentially seen and perceived as coming from the direction of the Supreme Leader. And while the current protests may die down uh, you know, in the next few days or so, or uh, not happen or re-happen again, but uh, the economic uh, ills that confront the Iranian nation are not issues that are going to go away. And I expect public protests to pick up and to essentially, uh, you know, sort of challenge the regime once again. And I mean, how do you think the government is feeling about all of this? Can it really survive this kind of pressure coming from so many angles, particularly from its own people? Well, I mean, the alternative or the direction in which the uh, Supreme Leader and those around him are pushing the country, are essentially trying to drive Iran into some sort of a North Korea type of a situation, which is totally alien to the thinking of the Iranian nation and the Iranian people, who certainly don't want to become further isolated and removed from international cooperation. So, as I said, but this, this drive on the part of the regime uh, by the part of those who control the regime, if I may say uh, more correctly, more, more accurately, is one that is challenged by many people within the uh, ruling establishment, including many people within the Iranian government, the cabinet, who don't hold views of that nature and see the progression of this kind of behavior as leading to an inevitable showdown with a country that is suffering from huge economic problems that cannot be overcome. Uh, in the case of or in the event of further isolation. You know, Iran is a totally different kind of a setup. The mentality of its people is totally different than a country like North Korea, for example, for which, you know, uh, we, we can sort of uh, roughly uh, try and compare uh, Iran to. Right. I mean, Iran has, you know, the right. The Iranians are able to travel. They know what happens in the rest of the world. They are exposed. Uh, they are internationally connected. So as for the Iranian people, and particularly these people that are taking to the streets, do you think they still believe in the revolution? And is there a way for the government to actually step aside while keeping the revolution's institutions in place? Is there any compatibility there? I think that, uh, you know, the believing in the revolution as a symbol is not something that is sort of daily questioned or even thought about. The revolution is not, people do not think about the revolution on a daily basis or even refer to it. What is for sure is that, that any notion of Islamic fundamentalism, which was the tenets of the revolution when it first came in, that is completely dead. People are not, uh, are not interested in wanting to have an Islamic type of government or a theocracy. People want to move beyond that. Every single uh, election which the regime has allowed to happen has indicated that people are moving further and further away from those people who are advocating a theocratic uh, kind of rule. So the people want are against that. The question is, how, do, how can people attain that? And what, is, what has to happen in light of what the Iranian people don't want is that, that in the process of change, 
to land up in a situation like Iraq or Syria where you have internal uh, uh, internal instability and potential civil war. These are things that people shy away from. And they think that through national reconciliation, perhaps uh, with many elements who are within the system but who have a different interpretation and a different definition of how Iran should go, okay. that is, I think, the cause that they okay. are trying to push for. You know, several things, to say the least, have rattled those in power in Tehran over the last, you know, years in particular. But I got to say, one that felt like it got so personal was to have Iran's only female Olympic medalist uh, defect over what she said were lies and injustice. I feel like that really had to hit home. It really was the most personal affront uh, to the people in power there. I, I, I fully agree, and I, but I want to say that the statement that she has made, which has made an impact in such a way that someone such as yourself is bringing it up and alluding to it in the way that you just did, but that sentiment has been shared for, for a very long time by many people in positions similar to hers. You have uh, leading lawyers like Nasser Sutu, they're languishing in jail for having spoken up. Many, many uh, prominent Iranians, many supporters of the revolution having been forced to flee the country. So uh, this has been highlighted by a personality like this uh, young, young woman, young uh, athlete who has achieved such great, uh, you know, uh, victories for Iran. But uh, this is a sentiment that is generally shared, especially amongst the young people who want to become part of the international globalized community and don't want to, be, to live an isolated uh, life being taught what to do and what not to do by a bunch of theocrats with whom they cannot have any sympathy or share any common future with. Right. Okay. Mardar Konsari, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for speaking to us. We appreciate it.